Welcome to the Jones College Prep Paving Pathways Counseling Event for Junior Students and Families. In today's presentation, I'll be talking about how the Counseling Department supports junior students and families uh, in their, plan their post-secondary planning process. This presentation is actually a two-part video. So this is the first video of two videos that we ask you to watch to get all the information needed to be up to date on our process at Jones College Prep. To start with, uh, just to make sure everyone is aware of who their child's counselor is, the, the listed names are the faculty in the counseling department. There are six counselors and one counseling department clerk, Ms. Olga Gutierrez, who supports us in various ways in the counseling department. Topics for today, uh, we'll talk about stu student goals for junior year, post-secondary pathways, we'll talk about match and fit in relation to college admissions, We'll talk about college and the various college admission components, the college application deadlines that we want everyone to be aware of, standardized testing and its role post COVID, um, college visits and virtual college visits, college research tools and the various tools out there that we'd like students to use to research colleges and then financial aid. So going over the student goals for junior year, the first one is really to explore post-secondary pathways, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, understand what fit and match is. Uh, one of the most important goals really is to research and visit colleges, whether that be physically visiting them or virtually visiting colleges. Attend and engage with your counselor through the Paving Pathways Counseling Program. Have a list of first five first choice colleges or an alternative post-secondary plan that you will work with your counselor to come up with. Recognize that the post-secondary planning process is stressful and be mindful of the student's mental well-being. So the various post-secondary pathways are a bachelor's degree, an associate's degree, registered apprenticeships, uh, occupation or what some people may call trade school certification or credentials, service year, gap year, um, and then full-time employment or joining the military. The most popular one at Jones is bachelor's degree and associate's degree. We've seen um, a, a few more students in the past in recent times uh, sign up for a gap year or join the military, but our most popular are uh, definitely the bachelor's degree and associate's degree. With that said, going forward in this presentation, we're going to focus on college because that is the, the focus that many of our Jones students have. But if at any point you or your child is interested in any of the other um, post-secondary pathways, please uh, reach out to your uh, child's counselor, because it's really important that the students sort of uh, work with us and we have many resources for all, all of the post-secondary pathways that we would love to support um, and, and expose your child to so that they are setting themselves up with the appropriate post-secondary plan um, and also have the resources needed to successfully join and complete that uh, plan, whatever that may be. So when we talk about college, uh, match and fit are definitely two of the sort of uh, criteria that we tell students that they really need to consider. So when we look at match, we're really talking about does the university, does the college match their profile? This is more talking about the numbers piece of it. Um, this includes grades, it includes test scores, uh, GPA, um, reading and writing proficiency. Um, does the college's um, sort of numbers or what they look for uh, when it comes to ACT score um, and GPA, average GPA. Does the student's GPA and test score, et cetera, match what the college is looking for? So it's more the academics than numbers. Fit is more what we call how do you feel about the institution, right? Um, how does it, how do you see yourself as a student fitting into that institution? So it could include cost, it, it could include size location. Um, a lot of times students will just say, you know, it, when I walk on campus, I feel like I fit there, right? Um, and so it, it could include all the other sort of non-academic components. Um, it could be the the rule, the suburban feel, um, what support services are available at the school that the student feels like is important to them. Um, so a lot of different uh, things fall under fit. 
Um, and students who, it's known that students who feel like they fit at a particular institution are likely to be much happier um, and more successful and are um, able to persist at that institution. So we find that match and fit are two really important criteria that students need to consider. One for match, just to make sure that the rigor and the challenge of that institution matches the student and the student would be able to um, uh, be successful at that institution, but also the fit in all the other areas, just the feel and, and feel like they have um, what they need to go to that school um, in relation to, you know, social factors and, and location and things like that. College admission components. Um, there's lots of different things colleges look for. Many of the colleges do a holistic review of an application or of a of a applicant. Um, and so one of the most important, one of the important things is to fill out the application itself. So there's a couple different types of applications uh, that colleges uh, ask students to fill out. The most popular one is the common application, which is an application that over, I think it's a couple hundred, I'd say, I think it's now over five or 600 schools um, are now a part of the common app. And so what that means is you fill out one common application for all the schools that you may be applying to that accept common app. Coalition application is very similar, a much smaller number of schools accept the coalition app, um, and, but it is same where it's one coalition app for multiple schools, um, and then an institution specific application, which is that specific institution has their own application and want their students to fill out just that application for them. Um, so there's various different types of applications. Uh, the personal statement, this will be something that in our English three courses, we have it uh, as an assignment for students. So they do get support throughout their junior year to write a personal statement. Uh, talking to many college reps, personal statements are the voice of the application. It's the voice of the student. It's an opportunity for the student to really show who they are. Um, and so it's a very, very important part of the application itself. Uh, the transcript, standardized test scores, um, which are have, have kind of changed now post COVID. A lot of schools have gone what they call test optional, which means that the student doesn't have to submit the standardized test score for admission. Um, they would be required to do some other um, essay or writing sample um, or interview, whatever the, the school decides uh, would would substitute that standardized test score. If the student has a standardized test score in a test optional school, they are still um, able to submit that test score um, if they feel like it'll help their application. Standardized test scores are uh, most commonly are ACT and SAT. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth as we go through the presentation. Letters of rec are another thing college admissions uh, officers will look at. It can be from teachers, a coach, a counselor are the most common. Um, they look at extracurricular activities, community service and, and enrichment programs. They look at, when they look at extracurricular activities, they look at commitment and how long a student has engaged in that extracurricular activity and what they've done really in that extracurricular activity. It's nice to have a few um, extracurricular activities or programs that you are committed to versus a long list of them and to show that the student has really participated and contributed um, in that particular program or activity. Uh, for some art theater students, um, there might be a portfolio or an, or an audition that is required and then some schools require an interview most of the time it is it's just an optional uh interview but some schools do have that optional uh interview as part of their application college application deadlines a couple uh deadlines that we want to sort of let you all know of now so you can plan uh you still have about a year but still time goes fast um, early action or priority applications are most likely due in November. So recently we just passed one of our most popular deadlines for applications, which is November 1st. Um, these early action applications are usually due November 1st or November 15th. Early decision, this is a binding application deadline. These are also due around the same time, November 1st, November 15th, but they are binding in nature, in nature, which means that if you apply to a school that is early decision, 
if they accept you, then you as the student are committing to go to their school. Um, a lot of times students feel like, you know, they want to apply early decision because they're very excited about the school and they know that they can afford it and they're 100%, you know, they've done their research, they're very excited about it. Um, and so they really, really are passionate about going to that one institution. So they'll do early decision. Restrictive early action uh, is an application that's mostly due in November as well. And it's early action, um, but you can only apply to one school early action. So when I do talk about just general early action, the first bullet point, you can apply to multiple schools early action. For early decision, you can only apply to one school early decision. For restrictive early action, you can only apply to one school early action. So restrictive early action is not a very popular application deadline, but you may see it at a school here or there. Regular decision is the other popular deadline. Um, these applications are mostly due in January, February, or March, and you will receive a response uh, in about March or April, depending on the school. And then in for rolling admission, it's really an application uh, deadline that occurs throughout the school year. So you can submit it in September, you can submit it in October um, and, and so forth, and they will send you a response within about six weeks of the of you turning in the application for early action early decision and restrictive early action students will likely hear a response from the college by winter break a few points about standardized testing so i did talk about test optional earlier um, many colleges and universities uh, recognize post-COVID that it's been difficult for students to take the SAT or the ACT and therefore have, have gone test optional. But before COVID, test optional did exist and it was because colleges and universities felt like standardized tests may not be the best way to evaluate a student's um, admissibility or uh, ability to be successful at their school. So they went to something called test optional. Again, a lot of different schools have way, different ways of, of how, why they are test optional and what is required um, for a student to submit if they do decide to go test optional. So you really would have to look at the school to see what the requirements are if they are a test optional school. There is a list of these schools that can be found at www.fairtest.org. And this has been updated with the uh, post-COVID schools that have gone test optional as well. Some schools have gone test optional for, uh, in relation to COVID for say class of 2020, 2021, and 2022. Um, so you really have to see if they're test optional just for, you know, this coming fall or for the following one. Super scoring is another type of standardized testing uh, sort of way that schools figure out what a student score is. What this is, is say, for example, a student has taken the ACT three times, they will take all three scores, and they will take the highest of English, highest of math, highest of science, highest of reading, and they'll come uh, uh, come up with a new composite score. So essentially, you're submitting all, say, all three tests, and they're taking the highest to get sort of the highest composite. Not all schools uh, super score the ACT or the SAT. There are some schools that do. It is recommended that if a student if a school does super score, that the students send multiple test scores so they can get a higher composite score in the end. Um, SAT subject tests, they could be required, recommended, or considered at some colleges. Um, it's, it's important if you know what school you want to go to or what your child, where your child wants to go to, um, because I, it's important that students take those subject tests as early as possible once they finish the class. Not all schools require SAT subject tests, very few schools do. Um, and so if you know that a student, your student is gonna pursue a school that requires a subject test and is taking chemistry, it may be a good idea to take the, AC, the SAT subject test right after the chemistry class to ensure that they're scoring um, the best that they can. Now, this is difficult for students who don't know where they wanna go. And so once you do find out as, a, as an applicant that a subject test is needed, then you would have to sign up with College Board and take that subject test. Some colleges will require specific subjects, like you have to take the math one, you have to take the chemistry one. Some schools will say, we want two subject tests, you can pick which ones those are. So again, it's just independent, in, in, um, it's just depends and varies on the school itself that you're applying to. 
college visit uh, tips. One of the best ways to figure out fit is to visit the college and be physically on the campus. Um, so we recommend that students try to visit a variety of different schools, public, private, small, medium, large, liberal arts, um, based on geographic location, if possible, to get a sense of really what kind of school they're looking for. And even if they sort of know that I don't want to go to a small school, maybe visit a small school just because sometimes the feel is different um, than what you see on paper or what you think uh, a college is. You can arrange an official tour and an information session with the admissions office in almost any of those schools. If possible, I recommend that students attend a class or stay overnight in a residence hall or eat lunch in the cafeteria to really get a feel of what it feels like to go to that school. Um, visit during spring break, long weekends or summer are good times for students to visit colleges. I would recommend if you can go during the school year, it's nicer because you get to see the college in action, whereas in the summer, you're not really seeing many students um, and much of what the college feels like during the academic year. Um, but if that is the only time in the summer for you to visit, then that's um, better than go not going at all. Virtual tours are available on the institution's website. Now with post COVID, a lot of schools have um, really improved their virtual tours and, and made them very, very good. Um, some schools have very, very nice virtual tours. So I highly suggest that, that students look to see if the school has a virtual tour. Um, there are also virtual college fairs that are now available. Um, and we as a counseling department send out information about those college fairs so students can attend. Various research tools when it comes to college uh, searching. Ask for help. Teachers, counselors, parents, guardians, friends, family, um, sort of ask around, see you know, who went where, what their experience was like. Um, do your research using various rub sources like Naviance, College Board, College Express, College Greenlight, look at college websites, visit colleges, attend college fairs, and also look at many different schools. Um, even if a student feels like they don't want to go to a school that is um, in a rural setting or in a suburban setting, still visit just to make sure that that is something you want or you don't want. And then we also at Jones have college reps that come to visit our school um, and, student, and our Jones students can sign up to meet with those reps. In the virtual world right now, we are we did have uh, Admissions Palooza, which was uh, twice in October, where college reps did come and students were able to sign up uh, for college rep visits. If a student uh, is interested in a school and wants to meet with, the co with a college rep, you can always reach out to the admissions office and they will set up a meeting um, with the student and the college rep. And also keep an open mind. Uh, there's, you know, over 4,000, well over 4,000 schools out there. So keep an open mind when you are researching or when you're looking for colleges. Financial aid. Um, every year, finance, the free application for federal student aid opens on October 1st. It is a free application. So if anyone says you need to pay for it, they are wrong. Um, it is on the fafsa.edu website. And so we've listed the exact uh, site there. Students need to complete this if they are looking for state or federal aid or even um, institutional aid, uh, need-based aid. A net price calculator can be found on every institution's website. It is a great way to figure out how much a student would need to pay to go to a specific school. The net price calculator does ask for some income information, so it is more specific than, you know, just a, a sort of like a general um, calculator. It does ask for specific income of the family so that it, it asks for GPA, things like that, so they can look at how much merit aid you possibly qualify for and how much need-based aid you would qu uh, qualify for. Every institution has to have this in their website, so you should be able to find it. It's a great way to see if cost um, is, if the cost of the institution is something that your family can um, afford. The CSS profile is on College Board. It's an additional financial aid document to the FAFSA, and it is required by very few institutions. It'll be on the admissions website if this is a requirement for students to fill out. 
So that concludes video one of our Paving Pathways Counseling event for junior students and families. Please tune in to video two with Ms. Goins, who's gonna talk about the Jones-specific counseling program and how we uh, uh, will support student th students throughout their junior year um, to go through this post-secondary planning process. Thank you for joining.